If you're planning to build your house in Ghana or are currently building your home here, or maybe you're just entertaining the idea and you're curious about the costs that go into this and the various stages of the process, Today, we're talking through every stage of the home construction process with cost estimates and insightful construction tips to improve the quality of your build. We're going to be doing this with one of the best contractors I personally know in the industry who has over 30 years of experience. There are timestamps in the description below to make it easy for you to navigate through this video as it gets very detailed. You can check out the link in the description below to access guides, worksheets and principles to use on your home building journey. Hi, Mr. Watson. Hi. Hi. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good. So can you tell us a little bit about your experience with construction and why we should be listening to you when it comes to building our homes? I have uh, experience ranging 30 years in the construction industry. I'm a typical builder, okay. but my core profession is conservation. Yeah, that's my core profession. I've practiced conservation for a number of, for a number of years. After that, I don't enjoy it again. So now, <laughs> I enjoy more of the construction and also by virtue of my background, what I did at school, mm -hmm. give me that advantage as well. I'm a chartered number of uh, chartered of builders or chartered for construction as a UK. With the number of experience I have and the kind of project I've handled from my previous uh, company as an employee mm -hmm. and now as an employer, okay. it gives me all that uh, experience. Yeah. So uh, I found a better chance to be talking about construction industry yeah. uh, I mean, as a whole. So this morning, we're in the right time. <laughs> I'll take you through. Uh, as we Everything. Go yes. Okay. Mr. So Watson, I know that you have built for a lot of the leading developers in Ghana. Sure. Okay, so I want to understand how long you have been building as a company on your own for. How long have you been in okay. that? Okay, as, em as an employer, I've yeah. built for people for the past 10 years. Wow. So, Mr. Watson, we're going to walk through the process of building a home. You're yeah. going to take us through the different stages yes. of the construction. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with the substructure. So, to start a project, you need to acquire land. Okay. And then, Ghana here, for some time now, there has been a challenge of acquiring land because of multiple sales. Yeah. So, if anyone is coming from outside, or even those Ghanaians, I would advise you go through the agencies who have the, the requisite experience. Once you acquire land, uh, you have to talk to the professionals, like uh, architect. Architect is the leading professional in the building industry. Once you acquire or you procure an architect, he will bring on board the structure engineers, the MEP, all the other services. He will bring them on board. And then uh, they'll go through for your concept, the design, all that. It comes with a fee. And once you agree on a fee, and uh, you, are, you, agree with the, you agree with the concept, of course, a concept will go through stages until you are okay with it. Then the design will start based on what you want. Okay. Whatever you do, it has to be designed. Okay. And the design has to be in a professional way. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have people who have gone through the, this uh, draftsmanship. I mean, they all design, but there's always a difference between a professional and uh, uh, those other ones. We call them technicians. If they come under the architect, they are supervised. But some of them, they do, they've done the work for so long, so they think uh, they also know. Yeah. But there's one thing I always advise clients to do is your structure elements, talk to the engineers. They will look at the soil type, and then they can advise you on the type of foundation to do. Once that is done, uh, you call in the technicians, you do your setting out, the engineer can help you. Once the setting out, setting out is done, we we'll start excavation. Okay. Do excavation, and then we we'll start the concrete work. If I'm doing a three-bedroom uh, foundation, for the start, I'll buy, I'll buy like a 300 bag, 100 bag of cement. Okay. I'll buy, uh, what do you call it, three load of chippings, three quarter. I'll buy one load of sand. The sand, if your pocket is deep enough, you can buy the river sand. The river sand, it helps the, uh, the concrete in terms of quality. Okay. 
because there isn't too much salt in the river sand. Okay. Whereas in the pit sand, there's salt in it, and with that one, to use more cement. But the river sand, you can use the sand cement because there's no salt in it. It's clean. It's clean sand. Yeah. So, our advice, anyone, unless you don't have access to river sand, right. use the river sand so that you can cut down on your cement. cement it's not that I have a luxury. No, there's nothing <laughs> luxury. Okay. If you want to cut down costs on sand, you use more cement. Okay. So it's this or that. Yes. Either or. Yeah. But. If you are far away and you don't have access to river sand, fine, you can you use it. manage with it. But at least try and use a good sand. There are some of the pit sand, they are good. You see that uh, there isn't too much clay in it, so you can use that. So, like I just said, uh, cement is costing around 50 cities now. 50? Yeah. That's if it's the gasm. Yeah, 50 cities now. A load of sand costs like 2,000. Uh, aggregate is like 190 cities now times 20 cubic. Say 200 cities times 20 is about 4,000. Mm -hmm. So you can add them together. You are oh, building yeah. your foundation oh. cost. You can then quantify the number of iron rods you need, mm -hmm. uh, rebar. Depending on the specifications on the drawing, mm -hmm. you can either go for high tensor or my steel. Mm -hmm. But with just a house, a, a two story, if I, you can go for my steel. Okay. I don't need an engineer to come and tell me that. But what we have in the market now, we have different sizes. We have some of the rods which are undersized. But we'll tell you this is 12 mm, but it's undersized. So we have to be careful over there. When the engineer says use 12, he means 12. <laughs> because the design is based on 12. Yeah, that's where somebody wants to cut cost in. Uh -huh. When you cut down cost, the consequences yeah. is also there. Yeah. So when they say use 12, Use 12, even if I'm using my seal. The problem we have in Ghana today is most of the rod, the my seal, come undersized. So you are compared to go and buy the high, ten high tensor where you have the, the standard sizes. Okay. If it's 12, it's 12. So again, our advice, because you cannot trust whoever is doing it for you, just say use high tensor and okay. you are free. You are high safe. tensor. You don't have undersize, you get the right size. But you just be spending more. Maybe spending more. So but you also avoid quality. Yeah, you also avoid future troubles. Mm. Okay, so once all that is done, you build your foundation, you come up to the uh, ground level, you do all your, all your block work in the foundation, you come to the ground, uh, ground level, you start doing your filling. Okay. You do your filling. If you want to build a structure which has some sort of an earthquake in it, then you introduce a ground beam. Okay. Like we are seeing. So that's earthquake resistance. Yeah, to stiffen the base so that, I mean, take care of the some shocks. sort of, yes, shocks. So people can do without the ground beam, okay. but others also want to do with the ground beam. It's all... Dependence on your preference. You know, yes. Um, uh, none of them is wrong or correct. You can do any of them. Can we have an estimate for the filling? And the ground beam? For the filling, it depends on the, the depth, the, 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 the terrain of the, of the land. If the land slopes and you want to level it up, it means you are going to do a lot of filling. Mm -hmm. And I will advise you to do the right filling. <laughs> Don't go and cut costs and build your house below the flooding level. Otherwise, you always have flood in your house. And the reason why we always use the, the center of the road as a benchmark when you are building a house is because the center of the road doesn't flood. So if you pick it from there to the site, yeah. it means your site is a par with, the, with that one. It will never flood. Okay. I've seen people, because they don't want to buy filling, they put the, the, uh, the, the house low there. And then when it rains, all the surrounding water comes to pile up on your house. I mean, you don't enjoy your house. This is a typical uh, strip foundation which is dug with the concrete in with the uh, foundation columns shooting up. On this one, you build your block work. Okay. Yeah, you come up and then you start doing your filling. After the filling, you compact it. So there's one stage that you need to take care of. As, as you fill, you make sure you compact. You don't throw in all the filling before you start compacting. It will not get to the bottom part of it. And if you don't compact well, at a later stage of the construction, when it sits, it can detach from the 
the, the slab on top, the concrete on top, it detached. And then you hear sounds under the concrete. So make sure your filling is always compacted. And then if you can afford, also you introduce a BRC mesh, like those ones you can see over there, they're rolling. Introduce them, BRC mesh on top of it and then cast the concrete over it. With that one, even if the settlement come, it helps you better than if there's no mesh in it. Okay. Before the mesh, introduce, introduce uh, what do you call it? DPM, the improved memory. From that stage, you start minimizing the impact of groundwater coming into the building. So once that is done, you put your mesh on top, you do your concrete. Before you put your block work on, you can introduce a DPC, the proof cost. Because it's an individual house, you might not have money to do the geotechnical report. The geotechnical report is the soil condition. We do those ones if it's a, a commercial property or yeah, we do all those things. But because it's an individual, uh, you might not be able to do that. So to avoid any future uh, occurrences, just introduce the proof and the proof memory and the proof cost, and then you are you are safe. Sometimes, if you walk around, we walk around Accra or any other places, you see under the building the chopping off. I mean, it becomes nasty. You can't stop it if you don't treat it from the foundation level. Okay. Okay. You can only treat it when you go in for this expensive mm. waterproofing, especially like an injectable one. Yeah. But it's, it's expensive. I think it's about two thousand plus per meter. Mm. It's a MC, MCC. That's it. It's expensive. So it's always advisable to take care of it at the foundation level. How much are we looking at spending on the foundation? Foundation, if I'm doing a three bedroom, three bedroom, for myself. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a procuring architect, engineers and whatever. For myself, maybe the foundation around 50,000, between 50 to 80,000, three bedroom. That's that is, I'm doing, I'm doing everything myself. There's no profit element in it. There's no mm. supervision from outside. That is the architect, engineers. I'm only engaging uh, laborers. technicians, laborers on a daily basis to do it myself. And because I'm doing quality work, that's why I'm mentioning okay. that, that amount. Mm. People can do less for that. They but can then, do less. And yes. let's go of some of these things yes. by the basic words. Uh -huh, so. But I won't do it. <laughs> because this waterproofing issue, it think oh, it's nothing. But when it starts coming up, you will not enjoy you your spend house. More, more to fix it when you could have just saved exactly. money if you had done it right the exactly. first time. Exactly. Apart from paying for a draftsman to do the drawing for me, I'm not paying any if money. You're going for yourself. You know, you're an architect. No, because I can, <laughs> I, I can, I can edit the drawings. Okay. Because uh -huh. you have the technical. Exactly. Know. That's where the advantage is. But That's I would need an architect. You know, an architect. I don't know. Oh, unless you come to me, I'll and, uh, come I'll to help you. you. Uh, but this is not to say architect is not important. Architects no, are very important. they are very important in the construction industry. They are the lead consult. That's why we call them. That the lead consult. All uh, other consultant comes under them. So they are very, very important. They play a major role. Oh. All the site minutes and all that, they will do it. Procuring, uh, drawing, yeah. uh, what do you call it? Construction permit and all that, they will do it. They will lead you to do it. They will lead the drawings for you. They will do that for you. And you know, when you don't have one of them, that means you have to do all of that work yourself. Yes. But I cannot go and lay because I don't have the certificate to do it. Okay. So that's why uh, the architect will come in. But if I go to the, the district, district levels, now I can go and do it. <laughs> I cry here, I cannot do it. They'll tell me, go and bring architect, yeah. go and bring engineer. But if I go to the district, if I go to my village, <laughs> I can go, I'll do my drawing, just go it, I want permit. Yeah. They'll calculate it and give you my cost. And I, I'll pay for it and then I come and start construction. So again, constructing the city is different from constructing the rural areas. Yeah, yeah so you should bear that in mind. The 50 to 80, which means if you are not doing some of these things I'm saying, you might pay more, less than the, that's what I'm saying, I yeah, give the agreement between 50. Range. Yeah, okay. so if I'm doing everything as, there may be the, what do you call it, the 80 might be okay. Even that, there are some people that might introduce different, different things in foundation. If you decide to bring uh, uh, the, what do you call it, service services mm. under the slab, it means oh. all those ones are coming in. Okay. Uh -huh. There are some people they bring in the, this like what they are doing here. They think they are bringing everything under the slab. Some people even bring the electrical that is coming in because they don't want to hook it on pole. It will come under the slab. They will have a room for it and all that. I mean, very small house but very sophisticated. So all that are there. Okay, so after the uh, the slab 
on bed, you start your superstructure. Okay. So you start your block work. And you make sure your columns are in the right positions mm -hmm. as per the drawing. You do your block work. Depending on the size of the column, and I always advise, I don't want building houses and the column protrude. <laughs> so yeah. if I'll do 150 by a certain width for the columns to take care of six inches or 150 millimeter block, I do that. Because if you give me a column which is square, maybe 200 by 200, the cross-sectional area is what? You, I look at the cross-sectional area. And if I can do the same thing, 150 by a certain width, and you give me the same cross-sectional area, I'll do it that way. Uh, the block sizes, you have four inches, you have six inches, you have eight inches. Mm -hmm. That is, if I translate, if I call it in the metric, that is 100, 150, 200. And you have the solid, hollowed, those are the two main, you have solid and hollow okay. for all the sizes. So again, if you want to create rooms, like the washroom, it's tight, but you want it to look a, a little bit spacious. And then the design says use 150. You can start introducing uh, 100. Okay. That will give you additional 50 millimeters space all around. Mm. You know, by the time you finish, it's created It something. looks a little bigger uh -huh. than okay. So all these things, you have to think about it. And once that is done, uh, you cast your columns, your windows and the door openings are marked out. And then you get to the lentil level. You cast your lentil. Again, you make sure your lentil goes over the block work. Okay. You can decide to make your windows uh, taller. Or you can decide to put them at normal. Uh, Wider. Uh, all that. Oh, Depending, okay. again, uh, you have to think, also take a uh, think into the future. Like I was telling you, mm -hmm. this is a column. You see how it's flashing with the yeah. wall? So this one, after the plastering, you don't see any protrude columns. Yeah. And if you measure this block work, it's 200. So the column is 200. So it's flashing. It's perfectly aligned. Yes. So it doesn't protrude even a little bit. No. It's, so once you plaster, but you here don't it see... But here it protrudes. See? It means they might have used a different column size. For that one. For that one. Or a different block work size for this one for this one uh -huh. i think so let me see this yeah. one you see this is 150. yeah that's 150. Uh -huh. so the so column they maintain the, the column 200 is column yeah but they've used a, a block work of 150. that's why you see 50 protruding so Maybe why, this why place, would they do that it's what i think it's where the steps is coming oh yeah okay. so it's not it's, it's not, not important yeah it's not important that's where the steps is coming okay yeah so so like Mami was saying, you see this is a washroom. Mm -hmm. I think here they are using 150 okay. instead of 200 for the normal walls. I would have used even four inches. It's all way of cutting down costs mm -hmm. because it's just a washroom. Yeah. Uh -huh. We haven't used uh, four inches. So, and you build it up to this level. This is what I was saying by lentil. This, are the, this one, uh, this more or less, it's like a beam mm -hmm. because it, there's a structure come on it. And uh, you can see these windows are going to be tall windows. Yeah. It's coming from the beam, le beam level all, all the way. way uh -huh. So the windows are going to be tall. It's not like the normal windows we, we normally do in our houses. So it's going to be, again, nice structure, as you can see. Okay, uh, so let's talk about this block level. How much are we looking at? What's the estimate for if this I stage? If I take a, a three-bedroom, maybe let me allow it to say 3,000 blocks. 3,000, if I'm buying 8 inches, if I'm buying for, say, 8 CDs, 8 times 3, 24, about 24,000 for block only. For blocks, just blocks? Yes. Hey! Yeah. That's expensive. So I'm just giving you... Estimates. Yeah. And then uh, a labor will build maybe 20 CDs per square meter. Okay. The 3,000 will give you about 300 meters square. Okay. So times 20 CDs, that's about 6,000. Uh, the so that's plastering, thirty thousand already. Yeah, wow. the plastering might take around uh, around twenty five per square meter. Okay. So assuming you don't have any openings inside, so you are taking three hundred meters square times two. So I mean plastering both sides mm. times twenty five. It's also S how much? Seven thousand five hundred. Uh -huh. Yeah, for plastering. Okay. So as for the columns, uh, for the super structure, the cement again. With all the columns and the beams, uh, you need like uh, 
150 to 200 cement bag of cement. Because we are going to do columns. The columns will come at a different mix. Yes, you lay your, this block, if you are laying, if you are doing the right thing, you know about 35 to 40 uh, blocks to one bag. Okay. You understand me? So you okay. need between yeah. 150 to 200 bags, bags to, do, to do your block work and, and, your, your, columns. and your columns. Maybe okay. uh, a bit might go into the beam, depending on the size of the beam. That doesn't include the screening. Yes, the screening will come. The screening, How many bags? The screening, for this? three bedrooms, maybe talking about 30 to 50 bags might do the screening for three bedrooms. Yeah. Depending on the thickness. Mm. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. need to be too thick. You know, if your levels so are if your concrete levels are good, you can be do let me say you do 40 millimeters thick. Okay. Yeah. So but you have to do the right mix proportion. Don't go and throw too much sun into it because you want to economize your cement. No, don't go and throw too much. Do the right thing so that your house the can last lasts. longer. Yes, you do right you don't have to spend as much on maintenance. Exactly. So that is done. And then you do your plastering. The plastering doesn't take too much cement because okay. the thickness is about from 12 to 20. But the one thing in our local market is these guys, they go there, they don't do gauges on the wall, most of them. But I've seen it changing now. In the past, they go there and then they start plastering, they don't do gauges. But I think it's changing now. So if you do a gauge of 20 millimeters on the wall, and you are plastering, uh, you, it, it controls the usage of the cement. You don't just, yes, you are, you are looking at a thickness of 20 millimeters. Okay. So it doesn't take too much cement. Mm. And again, for outside and inside of a three bedroom, maybe we can do with 80 or 100, there about, bag of cement. Okay, so once that is done, you do your roofing before you plaster anyway. So you do your roofing, then you plaster. Things that come under the concrete, make sure they are there before you cast your concrete. Okay. And the things that go in the wall, make sure they are there before you plaster. Okay. It is when you plaster and you come back to cut, cut then it's then like, it just it's afterthought. Then work. it's like you don't know what you are doing. Yeah. Uh -huh. But as long as you've not plastered, you can come back anytime, mm. cut and then put in those uh, uh, items. It makes there. work very difficult yeah. when everything is done and they are now cutting. Yeah. Sometimes even the bigger companies, or when you're doing the bigger project, if the ME, MEP contractors are not fast, we plaster and they will come and cut later and they will patch. But the point is, if they cut and we patch, there's That's always, uh, there's always a, a bit of bonding issue. Mm. Yeah. Again, so like this uh, beam, uh, column and the block work, if you are going to do it, plaster, you put a mesh here, the joint between the block work and the column so that cracks doesn't develop okay. here in the future. Okay. Very, very important. Roofing, depends on what type you want. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know which type. I see the secret one is more popular. Those prominent people in society, mm -hmm. if you go to their houses, they want, they want the hip roof. Hip roof has a, a wide overhang of roof, mm -hmm. which gives some sort of shade yeah. to the building. Mm -hmm. So in the afternoon, while the sun is shining, it doesn't get too much direct too sun. Mm. So that in the night, it's normal. Yeah. And that's how me. Uh -huh. So, uh, depending what your pocket is, <laughs> you can go in for roof with insulation inside. Okay. You can go in for roof without insulation. You can go in for roof with a thicker materials, like raincoat. Raincoat, yeah, roof is a, a bit expensive. Again, that type of roof, Roof is all over nowadays. Mm. But the China ones are also in there. The China ones, you use it in the two, three, even less than two years, you see it discarded. Oh. So we have all those in the system. But let's take a raincoat roof, for instance. A three bedroom roof, you might be talking about, together with the sheet and the framework, maybe 70 to 80,000. Yeah. Or more. That's why because people cut corners. Not, because I've not asked them in the recent time, but yeah. Yeah, 70, 70 to 100, but because it means they are doing the frame for you. Okay. Yeah, you are not using timber. They'll come okay. with their frame and okay. they put the sheet on top. Okay. And if, if you are using timber? Timber too. Do you have the good timber nowadays? Mm. That's one thing. Okay. If you can get a good timber, then it's fine. Then you treat it and then it's fine. But 
now you don't have a good team. Honestly, if you go to team market, all the teamers uh, are not matured enough. You buy it two, three years, uh, two, three months, then weavers have started chopping it. Even if you treat it, weavers are coming out of it. So it's good you use the, this uh, lightweight frame material now for roof. However, if you know a source, you can get a good timber. Fine. I mean, you can do. But the, the timber also add additional weight to the structure, whereas the other one is not as heavy it's, as it's light. Yeah, so light. it's faster? Oh. Uh, yeah, manufacturing and the installation is faster as compared to timber. Which will save you time and money. Sure. Uh, this one this is a, first the first floor. slab, first floor. So you see the concrete slab. And then when you go on top of this one, you see your, your roof, which is there. So like I was talking to you about the first and first fixing of the MGP, mm -hmm. as you can see, when you get to this stage, you can start cutting the walls and fixing, uh, and fixing your, your conduit pipes, both uh, uh, mechanical and electrical. electrical. You can start with that one if you have the dough. <laughs> but I always advise you do this one before you plaster, plaster. so that you when you do your, 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 your plaster, where, you, uh, where the cut are, once you plaster, you are okay. Mm -hmm. Again, when you are going to plaster, where you've cut, if the opening is quite big, or say 300 and over, I always advise you put a chicken mesh over it. Okay. Or there's other mesh in town before you plaster. Because sometimes cracks tend to develop around those, okay. those areas. And also, where the block work meet columns. I would advise you put a mesh there. Okay. So that when the movement starts, you don't find too much cracks over there. Where you put your DB, like they are doing behind us, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to do a, a large cut over there. After they put their pipes and everything, put chicken mesh on it, and then do knock it down. Don't, don't let it fall, knock it down, and then that time when you're plastering, then you plaster over it. Okay. So that uh, you don't uh, develop crack, cracks. because if it's too thick at one go, it worries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, as so, after roofing, you can. So you are discussing the internal now, and then you can also do your ceiling. Okay. Ceiling, you can go for. You have different type of ceiling. Now nobody do plywood ceiling. <laughs> it's either uh, POP. POP or plasterboard. Board. And uh, you know the system already. You going for this uh, metal. Uh, you go for these metals, and then you install them, and then you put your what do you call it? Your plasterboard on. You can do any design you want to do. You can do any design. So while doing that, you can also start your plastering uh, work. And then after the plastering, then you do your screening. Okay. You don't do your screening before you do your plastering because when you do your plastering, when you are rubbing, it drops on the That's floor. Wrong. So okay. it's always you do the plastering before you do the screening. And that means you are coming out. Yeah. So once you are, if you are going to do your screening also, you have to watch. There are other uh, services that also comes under the screening, like uh, electro cards and other stuff. Mm -hmm. There are data cables and all that. So you put them on the floor, like you can see here, mm -hmm. before you do your screening. And when that is done and everything is in place, you can start your tiling. Ceiling might cost you about, say, if you have 110, 125 Ghana CDs. For plasterboard, you can do a meter square. Okay. So if you say I have my area say 200 or 250 mm -hmm. times 110 or 120, it gives you the cost of the ceiling. Okay. That is uh, supply and install. Okay. And then you come and do your scheming as you are going to the pain, painting, painting stage. stage. Yeah. Okay. So that is for the ceiling also. So after the, the ceiling work, the plastering, the screening work, you do the tiling. Mm -hmm. Then you can start your painting work. Okay. Yeah. You can do your skimming. Skimming, you have the powder one which you mix with water, or you can go and buy the one the companies have uh, that is uh, in a bucket, mm -hmm. uh, putty. Mm -hmm. I mean, it comes with the eight price. Of course, the one from the paint, paint companies are more expensive. Mm -hmm. But again, we are trying to cut down our cost. So you can buy skimming, which you can mix with water. Skimming powder mixed with water. You skim the wall, first coat, second coat, and then you can apply your first coat a motion on a cleric. Okay. Yeah, so that it takes care of the powdering that will come out. 
Once you do that, you take your time and then you go around, make sure everything is in place, both mm -hmm. silly and war. Floor, what you want to do is okay before you start applying your fanaco so that it's not like, ah, you do and then, ah, I've forgotten. Mm -hmm. Let me put this here, then you are now come to cut. Of course, you cannot Sometimes, do without yeah. changes. But then, as much as you can, try to, try to avoid it, especially when you are doing it for yourself and you, you know what you are looking for. You plan it well so that you can avoid those things because it becomes expensive so when you are doing finishing and then you start going back to introduce uh, what they call it, those items. Of course, mm -hmm. if somebody wants to buy and they come and say, okay, break this wall, I don't want this wall here, put this, that one there, you know. That's different. That's yeah, different. It's painful. It's painful. It's painful. It's different. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I would say if I'm building my house as a three bedroom, this way I'll manage it. Mm -hmm. As for tiling, it's your, again, it's your pocket. Your pockets and your you can buy tiling, you can buy tile now for maybe 150 to 200 Ghana cities per square meter. I can go and buy tile for 80 <laughs> cities per square meter. So it's again, it's my pocket. Yeah. So you look at your pocket and you buy, you can go for granite, which is about 500, meter, 500 cities per square meter. All that one is there. But again, you can also, you, know, you don't have the money, but you can manage it, put the yeah. expensive one. To balance where, it to uh -huh, balance it so that at least at the end of the day you can also have some <laughs> sort of feeling. Yeah, you see. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, it's all planning. Mm. You have to think through it, give it my thoughts so that when you start, uh, it flows. And then uh, construction said that I always advise clients before you start construction, especially with the, I'm not young now, so you the younger ones, <laughs> try and have a budget. See, I need $150,000. All of them, I'll not mention dollars. I'm a Ghanaian. $150,000 Ghana cities. Okay. Let me have 100000 Ghana cities before I start construction. Okay. Looking at my income, I know if I have 100000 Ghana cities, by the time it's exhausted, maybe the 50 will have come. You understand me? But you don't start construction when you don't have anything there at all. In the olden days, our parents and their grandparents, they bought the house in their room before they come out. Yeah. You see, if you, you see what them, and send you a pay. It means, or pay can you go? You lose some money and put it down. Enough money. So when they start within a short time, bah, done. it's done. Yeah. So I always advise clients don't start construction and leave it midway. Because your materials that are exposed to the weather, mm -hmm. they are the measure of the weather. And the cost will keep increasing. Increasing. The Especially this season. area, if you leave your iron rods there for long, because it's close to sea. It will start rusting. Yeah. What do you do? You don't have the money to go and buy treatment for it. So again, you are just increasing your cost. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we need to have some sort of budget that you want to do. And then once you have part of the budget, at least two thirds of the budget, and once you start looking at your income, and I think mm. uh, we'll go. So I will not buy a house because I understand the construction. Okay. Because I think I can use a little money to build a house yes, than buy. Yes. Of course, you don't. You can, you cannot do that. So I can do. You, I'll come you, to you. You, you always buy. Uh -huh. I come to you. And other, the other thing is trust that people will have in you. Mm -hmm. We have colleagues or families who are outside, mm -hmm. but because of trust, they cannot give you anything to do for them because of the experience they have. Yeah. So again, I think this go to all of us, whether whether young or old. You should have that kind of discipline that if mommy give me money to do something I'll for do her, it. I'll do it. Because if I were to do mommy's own, I'm going to bring another person. Maybe through that I can make some money. Yeah. If I were to take her off your own, will you bring somebody no. again? That's why you're my, you're my sister. Oh. <laughs> you know, bring it again. You say, that's yeah. my senior brother. The thing take me. <laughs> I, mean, I cannot take many of my friends to, her, to him. Oh. my house for me. He has built two apartments Out for of my it. money. <laughs> I cannot take any of my friends to him. Oh. Yeah. You see? But if I do your own for you nicely, hey, after my brother, they don't joke. He doesn't live on your this uh, dollar show. He's a man of himself. You know, that one, you are building something for yourself so that your colleagues, your friends, your sister, your family members can keep on bringing business. Since I started my own company for the past 10 years, we've not started any project and stop so, midway. No, all the projects we started, we finish it. Once your rooms, uh, your washrooms are defined, uh, you fix your accessories over there, and I think, uh, we are done. So plumbing is not too much of a problem. But electricals, it comes with certain uh, uh, specialization because the way you arrange it mm -hmm. and the type of light, 
give certain beauty to the room. You know, it's not just throwing light there. <laughs> yeah. You have to give certain beauty. That's why people like spotlight, people like other light, and you have to be arranged and all that. Uh, I don't want to talk about the, uh, how to call it, telecom and all that because mm. I'm not a specialist, a specialist on that. Okay. Yeah. Like I talk us to plumbing. Plumbing, yeah, plumbing. Well, it's, it's, it's like a electrical. You do the face fixing as the block work is ongoing. Any plumbing that will go under the slab, you have to do it before you put the slab. Other than that, you have to come back and start breaking the slab. Yeah. Sometimes we do because we change the arrangement in the washroom. Okay. Once we, once we change it, maybe you were doing it and uh, I'm not there and I can't say, ah, mommy, this room, I think if you really bring the things this way, uh, it will help us. It give us more space to walk around. I discuss it with you. If you buy into my idea, we can Change break the everything. floor and then just yes, rearrange the pipes. Spend more money uh, and do it again. Yeah, and then, but it's, it also gives you some sort of uh, aesthetic in the room. Because washroom, yes, it's a washroom, but when you enter there, you should be able to see how things are arranged in a professional Which is manner. It's good to plan before. To plan before. So that you I'm don't saying. have all these. You know, this, all these things have drawings. Yeah. I have a project at Tabora now. Uh, the lady coming to look at it. And the uh, primary pipe is passing through the window. Middle of the window, and then you see primary pipe coming down. How are you going to do it? So you see, it's not everybody who have that yeah. thinking. You see it as pipe coming down, but he hasn't thought of it. If you think about it, you will divert it in the slab before it comes down. But now you have allowed it, and it is there, you build up first, second, third. Now, someone has to come and figure out how he's going to divert those pipes. And, then, and not just diverting it. If it's a, a, you have to do it such that the effluent and the solid have to flow. If it's divert, if the bend is too much, the solid will get stuck in it and will start having blockage. You see? So plumbing, that is water in general, is one thing that you have to be very careful when you are planning for development. Because when you start getting leakage, you sweat. Because a leakage can be here, the pipe that is leaking can be here, but you see the water coming out over there. Back. Yeah. Because the water will find its way out. So we'll be, going, we'll be running through the slab until where you have a, a hole or a, a, a place that it can, it can come out. So there's a water coming out there. You think it's there, it's not breaking. You chase it up to here. So you can see the destruction of course. Because it's difficult to detect where the leakage is. So the design is said that when you are designing, we try to bring, especially the service line. If it's a waste line, it's not too much of a problem. But the service line, through and um, try and break in such a way that it's close to the service areas, the washrooms, so that if there's any problem, you can easily trace it. And then when you build, you have to do as well drawing mm. for those things, especially plumbing. Otherwise, when there's a leakage, you start tracing it. Yeah. You, you break a lot of things before you find it. Yeah. But if there's an as drawing, can you can trace the, the line and then see where you can do your destruction to. Mm -hmm. So you make it again. Yeah, you still destroy, but it's cheaper than not knowing where the pipes are and then just breaking to look, to look for pipe. So Mr. Watson, for yeah. a three bedroom, how much are we looking okay. at for the cost per square meter? Okay, uh, so for average, uh, I'm not talking about the high end. Okay. Yeah, for average, the core and shell for average house, might be around one, 200 to 30 dollars about dollars. Okay. Yes. And then to finish it, maybe around 350 dollars. 350 yeah. dollars. Yeah. Okay, so for core and shell, about 200 dollars. Yeah. For a completed unit, yeah, inclusive of all the finishing. Yeah, for yeah. average, average Average. House. Yeah. So let's say that's mid-end. Yeah. Very basic. For, if I'm doing it. At, okay. Yeah. So about because, 250. Yeah, those ones we've done for in the past year is around 650, 700. Whoa, to per finish. square. Yes. Wow, and but that's because you're using high end finishing. Yeah, and the core and shell comes about um, 330, 350. Yes. So uh, again, if you look at all these things, it's even cheaper in the sense that the client also go to the market to buy some of the items. So I only, I only do the fixing. Okay. You understand me? Yeah. Uh -huh. Again, I just, I told you from the beginning that people can, can go for tiling or lighting 
fee fetchings, which can cost so much. Tiling can cost people 200 or 250 meters square per meter per square, Ghana cities, uh, per square meter. So if you are using that type of tiling or granite or marbles, it's going to cost you more. But um, we are using it, we are talking about average. Everyday, everyday tiles, coming, nothing yeah. special. So, so you can build a basic house at about $250 per square meter. Sure, sure, okay. can do that, sure. So, when you be able to rely on, on the person, him or her, okay. uh, I mean, it can be a woman, it can be a man, I'll be able to me, I'll show a cheat and do it well for you, take care of the money. Is the money that is the issue? When people see dollars, they think that is the end. Can take care of those things for you. It can be outside and have a decent house or a decent home built for you. And they are very reasonable costs. Because as a builder, I believe building a nice house at a reasonable cost is what you call a it's how, it's how you can call yourself a builder. If I have a builder and have to give me so much thousand dollars before I can build a house, then I'm not a good builder. <laughs> you understand me? Yeah. Uh -huh. So we understand costs at the same time construction because of mm. our background. Uh -huh. So when we are talking, we're talking as if we are the one doing it ourselves because of our background, because of the co we, are, we can control the cost. So when we are talking, we know what we are saying. Of course, somebody who hasn't got the, the cost background might talk different from what I'm saying. But I have the cost background, at the same time the construction background. Yeah. So when I'm talking, so you can balance I know where I'm coming from, yes. Balance. Some of the challenges I face is the cash flow from the client. Mm. And that's, that's my biggest challenge. <laughs> Sometimes you're on the construction uh, site or industry, you are building for Mr. B. It's paying you, you get a point, you are not finished. His cash or his or her cash flow is not coming. You can also not, this, uh, what do you call it, um, demobilize the site because you have engineers, you have um, supervisors, you have all those people to pay. How do you pay them if the payment is not coming? It means you are accruing costs. You have statutory payment to be made because the payment is not coming. So cash flow is something that I always pray for. That's why beginning I said, before you start construction, at least see the kind of budget and then you have some part of the money down. So by the time what you have done is exhausted, at least, even if you are selling or you are whatever you are going to do or you are getting the income from any of your business, you might get something in before the first chunk of money what got finished. Yeah. Silly is another challenge. If you don't get the honest people to manage their site for you, you don't, don't forget, you can't be there for every, every, every minute, every day every, now. So like I'm here now, I don't know what is happening at the site. <laughs> so if you don't have honest people there, a bag of cement, a packet of tar, all those things, at the end of the day, it comes, yes. If the person take every, a bag of cement every day, in a year, it takes 360. Okay. So you can uh -huh. So it's building his house with your cement. <laughs> it's not taking it yeah. with trucks. So we think it's, it's small. It's not a big deal. It's taking one bag a day. So even if you take Sundays out, it's taking over 200 bucks. So if you work for you for two years and you take that, you see where it's, it's, where it's coming from. So talking to you, we see that working with a, co a professional, a contractor, yeah. it will help us save money in some places. But then for the average person, I mean, we would prefer to build on our own because I feel like maybe we can save more. That's what we think. Yeah. So from what you've said, I see how we can save with you. But aren't the services of contractors expensive? When I'm working for somebody with a company, mm -hmm. it has a contractual element. Yes. So certain things are done in a certain way. Mm -hmm. If I'm building for you as a Watson because I want to help mommy, I'm not bringing any contractual issues there. Okay. You're also not attacking me for any contractual issue. Okay. One thing that makes contract work expensive is, is because it has a contractual, because it has a risk element. Okay. If you're not able to finish, there's a certain amount of money you have to pay. If you delay, it's a certain amount of money you have to pay. But if I'm doing it for you and I, you know I'm only helping you, you look <laughs> come and tell me if you don't finish, this is how much you pay, this is what you do. You don't do it. So, and uh, you're not bringing any external supervision, any big supervision. I'm doing it for you. I mean, I'll pass your side twice a week. Okay. So, if I pass there, buy me a fuel. That is it. But if I'm doing it for you on a contractual basis, it means you are going to pay me my cost. 
And that's where the uh -huh. expense comes. You are buying the materials yourself, so there's nothing like I'm charging profit on the materials. No. Everything you are doing, you are buying it yourself. Maybe uh, we will, I will collect money, give it to a former on site, go and buy 100 bags of cement. When he buys, you know the price already. We give you your receipt. Those kind of things. It's like you are building yourself. Yeah. But you have a professional looking after it. Supervising. Supervising it. Okay. So that is one aspect. So that cost is lower than Done. giving the entire project, project to the contractor. In a contractor basis. To say, okay. Uh -huh. Do it for me. Okay. You are doing it within this time. Mm -hmm. And these are the specifications. You know, specifications one thing also cost. Yeah. Make a building cost high. Specifications. That's a critical thing. We, we base our prices based on the specifications. Maybe the cement, you don't want this uh, gas. You want uh, foreign cement. Mm. Of course, it will be much expensive than here by the time you add the freight and all that. Uh, you want the ground to be tested. You want this thing to be done. You want everything. So it's like you know what you have in mind. Yeah. So you are giving it to me on contract. And you have, it comes to the contractual risk. Okay. So when, when I'm also working for you, I have to make sure all those risks are covered. To the extent that I can even go for insurance. Okay. Performance bond. And then you have to give me advance. And I go for advance payment bond. So in case I'm able to finish the project, you can pull the bond on me okay. to recover your money. So it, it comes with this risk. Or else if I for my sister and I'm doing it for you, ah, I didn't go for a sister. Hey, my sister kuma kuma na dia. And that's a medium you can achieve no. Hey, then be chronic be no. And that's a medium you can achieve no. How can you assist us if we're looking to build a home or a project, something like that? Can you talk us through that process? Okay, so. Uh, I, being a contractor, what mm -hmm. I would say is uh, we are always open for discussion. You can come with a proposal. We'll sit down and go through with you. We can always advise you. Don't forget, we, we, we don't just build. Yeah. We, have, we can also coach you, okay. even if you are not getting a job from you. Okay. We, took, we take you through. Yeah. And then you see what you want to do. We bring your proposals if you want to do part of the work, if you want to supply part of the items, you are always ready to help you do that. Once we establish some sort of uh, truthness and trustworthiness, you are always available. We can do in the larger scale, the medium, and the smaller one, it depends <laughs> what we are looking for. We are look yeah, we can always uh, attend to you. There's nothing that comes to us, we say no. Okay. Even if we will not do it, and uh, we think we can help you in terms of guidance, we do that. Okay. Uh, we are always there to for assist. our client to assist. Yeah. Okay. So we'll leave your contact details in the description sure. if anybody sure. wants to use your services. Services. You. All right, thank you, Mr. Watson. Thank you for your time and yeah. for talking us through. Sure. All right. you, are you are welcome. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you found value in it, definitely leave a like, share a comment, share this with your friends and family that may also find it useful. Hopefully I see you in my next video. Have a beautiful day, a beautiful week, and an amazing life. Bye!